Hi boys and girls, it's me and we're back in the lair after a, a, a fantastic time at Kutztown. I want to thank everybody for all your, your thoughts and kind words and comments on it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I had a lot of fun putting it together and I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. But today I've got something on the bench. Okay, this is a Zenith Model 733 AM and FM clock radio. And this was brought to me by a friend. He asked me if I could kind of go through it and see uh, see if I can make it work. I got it kind of non-functional like. And you can see it has all the original dirt and patina and, and all that. The cabinet is in fairly good shape except it's got a couple of pitting things there on the cabinet. But uh, there were some issues with it and uh, I've already started to sort it out. So let me let me show you what I've sorted so far. Yes, as you can see, it's got the selenium rectifier, and as if you look in there, you could also see a a modern capacitor that I've already put in there. Now that was a fairly ugly bumblebee cap, and uh, as you know, they're uh, well, they're like a you know, <laughs> like a flat tire or used uh, used tissue. You know, it just uh, they're really terrible. So I've done that. Well, this is a .047. And although it, it's still in physically good shape, it wasn't that awful as far as uh, value. The value was not quite double, and it's got it's a little bit leaky. So that's actually a nice indicator. It's telling me that this radio probably did not have a lot of hours on it, so it sat quite a bit. So that was a good thing. Uh, amongst other things I had to do is that both the tuning strings were broken and I spent a considerable amount of time doing that I found the I found a schematic that actually had the uh, the proper stringing diagram so uh, I took care of that so now you know this works you know, as, as usual Zenith F AM FM's this is no different than any other Zenith AM FM you have uh, a bread slicer on the AM side and slug tooting on the FM side. The other thing I had to do was is that this light didn't work. And uh, for for those of you who are familiar with Zenith, you know that these are kind of pseudo special bulbs. It's an NE51. Um, they're, they're almost impossible to find. But I actually a couple years ago I was routing through some tubes and I found a box of these brand new, and that was the first bulb out of that box. So that's a NOS NE51 bulb. So here's a picture of the SAMS diagram. And I found the dial stringing diagrams. Let me go over to the schematic. Now I'm going to bring this in a little bit so you can see it better on the camera. Okay. So let's see. Am I where I want to be? No. Okay. Alright, so here is where the power is powering up. It's got a, a cardboard or a, uh, a back on it that's got four pins on it that closes up. And uh, here's it here. I should, uh, well, I'm going to use my finger. Here's the selenium rectifier right here. And uh, when I plugged it into my, my wall outlet, I got a little brave. I plugged it in there. And it's just under, and this is after I replaced that .047 Bumblebee. It's just under 135 volts. It's like 134.8. But also keep in mind too that, uh, and then you can see right next to it is the 22 ohm dropping resistor before it gets into the first uh, high voltage uh, three section cap. It's a three section cap. It's 80, like this one says, and further down the line there's 220s. So I think that I'm just going to go ahead and replace that anyway, and. Uh, Put a put a different dropping resistor in there because um, I have a feeling that uh, this, this radio is going to draw a little more current than typically any you know standard A5 or anything like that. I just would feel better if I had a like a one in four thousand seven and maybe a thirty three or forty seven ohm one watt dropping resistor. So uh, I think I'm going to do that next. All right, now you can see from these pictures. 
All right, the blue thing, there's our original selenium rectifier. And what I did was I just snapped off the tab where the, uh, the red wire used to go. And in place, that's a 1N4007 diode. Okay, and notice that the band is kind of facing away from the chassis. A di for, for you newbies out there, what the diode does or what the rectifier does is, in this case, it's a half-wave rectifier. So you're taking an AC waveform, kind of cutting it in half, and the stripe, okay, is just allowing it, the, the, the diode only is going to flow current in one direction. So by having the stripe connected to the wires, that's going to be the direction of the current flow going to, and you can see in here, you follow the wire all the way back to the uh, 22 ohm resistor. It's a red, red, and a black stripe uh, resistor there that's feeding into that 80 microfarad multi, uh, multi uh, capacitor that's in the chassis. So what I'm going to do now is put the radio back together. I want to see what my voltage is going to be. And again, the uh, it's saying on the schematic 135 volts. So uh, we'll see if that's right. Okay, back to the schematic here. Now I just did uh, some some work on the radio, and I'll show you what I did in a second. But first, I wanted to get back to the schematic. Now you see, here I got the selenium rectifier here. And we have the 22 ohm dropping resistor. Well, my actual voltage here was a little over 132 volts. It was like 132.1, and it all tied into the big 80 microfarad uh, section of the capacitor. So here's getting back to the radio. Now I have kind of a temporary setup here, just so you can see what I did. Now this wire actually goes to a terminal strip behind that. Here, let me get my pointer. Now watch what I'm doing here. This 470 ohm resistor, and that tied in there, and then it went to a, the, the 22 ohm dropping resistor, which is now there. That's the clock, by the way, which works. Um, I have the radio on, and what I've what I've been doing here is I've been trying. I have a number of different resistors here. That's just a very small portion of what I have. And ultimately what I did was I settled on a, that's a 68 ohm, uh, one watt, or actually it's a two watt resistor. There was, they claimed a one watt resistor. That's a two watt that I had. And that's my current line voltage there, or my voltage uh, past the dropping resistor. So it's actually about, uh, about three volts less than before. And I'd like to err on the side of caution now, because, and then there's the, uh, Kind of hard to see. Maybe I'll bring the light down so you can see it there. And now you can see where I installed the 1N4007 diode. So sometimes what you have to do is, and then, you know, of course, I have my meter here and whatever. You have to kind of experiment a little bit. Now, why I had that off of there, now you can see I have that black clip lead right on the 8, that's the 80 microfarad section of that cap. Well, I had the wire off it. There is a wire that goes on there. Um, basically, I, I checked it out, and uh, it, it, it's right around. I think it was like about 82 microfarad, and it's less. The the, 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 the you know the ESR is good, um, and the leakage was less than three percent. So I'm not even going to change that out. I'm going to reuse that. And uh, after about an hour of playing with different combinations, I'm I'm, I'm mostly satisfied with that. I would rather be a little bit lower, especially with today's. I mean, this radio was made in the 50s, so that's 70 years ago. But I think the line voltages that you would get out of your home were significantly less than what they have today. Um, you know, my, my, my voltage here is about 123.7, 123.8. That's probably significantly higher than uh, what was around back in uh, 1954 or five, that was even before I was born. So I'm gonna wire that guy in there now. And you know, and even so, there's still a couple sweaty coupling capacitors and bypass capacitors in here. And chances are, and I, from my experience, once you change them out anyway, that'll probably, uh, probably would bring that voltage up a little bit, you know, a couple tenths anyway. So it'll still be, well under where it was the 132.3 or 132 point volts I, 
132.4 volts I had before. That was a mouthful, huh? Okay, before I wanted to put the chassis back in the case, what I wanted to do was kind of clean this up a little bit and uh, rather than bore you and show you every step that I did, what I did was uh, I kind of cleaned up the Bakelite here. Um, the numbers on the radio and on the dial are pretty good. But what happened was I, I used some, uh, the front of the grill area here uh, was really dirty and I went into that with simple green and a brush. Um, and then just, you know, with fit like maybe 50-50 mix of simple green and water, it did a really superb job as far as cleaning everything up here. Uh, what I did was too with the clock, I don't know how well that's going to come out. Um, as you can see, there's some uh, silicone in place with the uh, the dial glass. Originally, there was uh, like a foam gasket in there, and it was all dried up and peeling and falling apart. Um, what I did was I had an O-ring kit, and I had cut up some O-rings and put that in there in lieu of that gasket, and it looks like it's going to work okay. Um, and now, you know, of course, everything inside here is fairly clean. It's not 100%, but it's it's pretty darn good. It won't, you know, ain't going to stink things up. So now it's just a matter of, uh, oh, and then the last thing I did was I removed the Zenith logo. I wanted to kind of make this pop because if you saw in the earlier part of the video, this was a little bit tarnished. And what I did was I took the clips out of there. And now you can see that a little bit better. I just bent those clips to make it straight so I could take the logo out. And what I did was I took some Mother's Magnet Aluminum Polish to it, cleaned it up real nice, and then I hosed it off, you know, with a toothbrush and some soap and some water. And then I took it outside and set it on a piece of cardboard, and I, I just went over it with clear lacquer. And I've done that to the brass pieces on, like, uh, Transoceanics to kind of make them uh, plop, pop a little more. So, all I gotta do now is uh, just get the uh, chassis back in here. Well, here it is, boys and girls. It took me about uh, half an hour or so to put this back together because it's just very, very interesting. I didn't want to bore you with what, what I had to do, but I'll just tell you briefly to get basically the, the, the chassis and everything back in here, you have to put the clock in place first and get this all here all right and then there's a, a bundle of wires that's basically on a little harness and there's a holder that actually screws to the back of the radio so once you take you take the screw out it gives you just enough room that you could actually take the clock put it in place then you can slide the chassis in um, but when you do that, I also had to disconnect the, uh, the, the tune loop that's on the back of this thing for AM. There was four wires, or actually two of them were for AM and two of them for FM. I had to take all those wires off, desolder them, get the chassis in place, resolder it. Then I was able to get the chassis in here and then, you know, put all the knobs and everything you see back in here. So, uh, uh I think the radio looks pretty good. Um... It's really weird when I got the radio, the, there's the light amplifier here with a brand new NE51 bulb to turn the radio on. It's actually up here. And now, as you can see, I don't know how well it's coming through on the thing, but there's the there's the light over here. And uh, once it warms up and everything, you'll see. And then you could also see right now the clock is in place. Two of the knobs are missing, which I had picked up at Cutstown, but I didn't know that the third one was stripped out. Or I would have bought all three. But, uh, and also I said uh, earlier in the video that I had the wrong knob there and I don't know how well it's coming through but if you see there the tone control knob I actually found a correct tone control knob which is over here it's kind of hard to see in this light but so I have that in there now and life is good again so I have it on FM right now this the volume control here. Uh, I also know tomorrow. This is the tuning. A virtual inside look. Tuning the control there. That's just a uh, FM all sports thing because I didn't want to. I, I would rather play music. I think I, I like to listen to music, but uh, apparently YouTube has their 
police out there, and I don't want to get banged for a copyright infringement or anything like that. So, volume, this is your tuning control, and this is your AM FM switch. I'm going to have to turn off the light, otherwise, the AM is going to be all distorted. So, now I'm on AM. You can't find them anywhere else. So, go to WCPAM.com. Register to win for your email. I love the audio on this radio. It sounds so nice. Morning, check her out. Raquel Williams. So I'm working a tone control back and forth. So anyway, I think that uh, all things considered, turn the radio back off. I think the owner is going to be real happy with this. So uh, and I kind of had some fun doing it. So anyway, hey, thanks for tuning in and uh, stay safe out there and. I'm going to say something I haven't said in quite a long time that I used to say in my videos. Don't throw all those old radios out unless they're totally junk because then you can fix them up and enjoy them for future generations. So everybody take care. Goodbye.